Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich back with you with another ankle cast. It's been a while. The ankle was severely broken and now the cast is just finally setting. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, sorry for the super long delay between shows. Uh, it turns out a lot of crap has been going down. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you've heard this or that on Facebook or whatever. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's been a little uh, of an interesting time since the last time I did an ankle cast. I can't even remember the last time I did an ankle cast when it comes down to it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, we, we move on. We deal with it and uh, just have to live with it. Um, so yeah, there uh, it's it's time for another ankle cast. I'll give you a bit of an update. There's no update on writing because this month has sucked so bad I haven't written a thing, but it's been kind of a while, sadly, since I wrote a thing. Um, but uh, maybe I can get back onto that here really soon. Um, but yeah, uh, so... I wish I could remember where I last left off with the disaster that has been my life. Um, we were about to move in. We'll just say this. We'll start here. We were about to move into our new house. No, we'll go back further. Um, we sold our old house, right? Uh, I'm sure I at least told you guys about that. We sold our old house and we had to move out. Uh, and it was somewhere around the middle of June that we moved out. I can't remember exactly what the date was. I could look it up and find it. But, uh, but I don't know it off the top of my head. So, um, yeah, we, we had to move out. And we found ourselves an apartment where the person was going out of town for the summer. Uh, her husband had gotten a job, like, all the way across the country, and she was still here as a teacher and so she had the summer off now and she was going to go be with her husband for the summer take her kids out there and all that stuff but she was going to have an empty house and so she was looking for somebody to uh to rent it and we stepped up and said we would rent it from her and so we had until the first of august to stay in this house um actually the 31st of July when it comes down to it. The 1st of August was when she was coming back. And uh, so we were going to be in that house and our, our house that was being built was supposed to be done around July 14th. So we figured, you know, we got two weeks of leeway. That should be fine. We'll be totally good. And so, uh, so we weren't worried at all. We... <laughs> We were all set, and we, you know, we were doing this and that. We, we would go in and we were putting in some of our sweat equity on our house. We did some painting on it. Um, I don't, it didn't really count as sweat equity because we didn't do it. We didn't, we decided against paying for the two-tone paint. We had them painted all one color, and then we just used that color for the baseboards, and we painted in the rest of it, the, the main color that we wanted. Um, so, yeah, we were doing some of that kind of stuff, and, you know, we're like, yeah, this is cool. And every week we'd go and look at our house, and I'd take pictures of it and say, this is what it looks like this week. And then the next week we'd do it again, and we were all excited. And it was running a little behind. It was supposed to be ready. Um, turned out it was going to be ready just right at the very end of August, or, sorry, the very end of July instead of the uh, middle of it. Um, but we thought we were going to be okay, but time came closer and closer, and, uh, then stuff started coming up with the financing for the house. Um, we were doing, uh, and I don't really know the story, because I'm not the money guy, uh, in my household. That's my wife. She's the one that, uh, is into that kind of stuff and deals with that kind of stuff, and I'm happy to let her do so, because... Um, it's not really my thing. I don't, I'm not very good with it. I don't understand it very well, unfortunately. So, she would be able to give you better details. I'm going to give you a really wide-reaching uh, kind of a description of it. 
So basically, where we live is middle of nowhere, and uh, something to do with mortgage insurance. Uh, depending on the kind of loan you get, you can pay a lot less mortgage insurance. And the the it's a rural housing loan allows you to pay a much smaller amount of mortgage insurance. So we were going with a rural housing loan to uh, to finance our house. Now. Apparently, a rural housing loan has to go through the USDA, which I believe stands for United States Department of Agriculture. They must be behind rural housing loans in some way or another. I guess it makes sense. Rural and agriculture kind of go together. But uh, they have to look over your, your loan and, and vet it or whatever the heck they do. I don't know what they do with it. They look it over and make sure that it's going to fly and they'll back it or whatever. Um, so it had to go to them. And uh, when it first went to them, they were saying stuff like, oh yeah, it should be about uh, two weeks. I think that's what they told us when we first started getting everything to the people then when they went to actually send it in to them, they're like, oh yeah, it looks like it's two, uh, you know, 10 business days, or uh, which I guess is two weeks too. Maybe it was like 15 business days, something like that. Now it's all of a sudden longer. So we get the stuff in, but now it's like, uh-oh, our loan is not going to be ready when we have to move out of this apartment. <laughs> um, and so the day comes that we're supposed to move out pack everything up and we go uh, we have nowhere to go because our home although the home we, we did our final walkthrough with the guy you know the builder and everything we went and looked at it and said oh yeah this has a little ding and this needs to be fixed and this and that um, but uh, but yeah we're we did that and now we can't move into it the house is ready but the loan is not ready and so uh, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. We got to live somewhere, obviously. And uh, so <laughs> we uh, talked to my sister who was actually going on vacation. And my sister said, hey, yeah, we're going to be out of town. She's going on a big vacation where they're, they're taking actually my dad has a motor home. And they're taking his motor home and they're driving all the way across the country from here to New York and, and back. And it's going to be like this big two week long, crazy, awesome vacation that they're doing. So they're going to be gone for a long time from their house. Um, we're actually planning on going on vacation too, but not for several days. So uh, we have like three or four days before we leave for vacation when we have to move out of our apartment. And uh, so my sister's leaving before us, but she's still not leaving for uh, either. I think she was like, we're leaving either on Thursday or Friday. So you can come and stay at our house starting that day, whichever one it is that we leave on. And so I talked to my dad and my dad's got an extra bedroom that we can stay in. Um, but my dad and my stepmom are uh older and my stepmom has got a lot of problems right now with her back um so she's you know not not as keen on having people at her house to to deal with as she would be perhaps if she was feeling 100 percent good um she just had surgery not too long ago and she's got like a back brace that she has to wear and all this kind of interesting stuff going on with her so we knew that we couldn't impose on them very much and so we tried to figure out the best way to deal with stuff we uh, shipped our kids off to some friends house had them stay at their friends house for a couple of days different kids to different friends and uh, just me my wife and the baby went to my dad's house and we stayed there one night and then we found out that my sister was gonna be gone for her vacation by Thursday. So just the one night at my dad's house. 
and then it was off to my sister's house. We stayed two nights at my sister's house, which was interesting. I mean, for one thing, it's kind of a pain to have to pack up everything and move out again and again and again. You know what I mean? We've got very few stuff, uh, you know, very few stuff, very little stuff now. Um, we, we, we stacked a whole bunch of things in my dad's garage because he has uh, some extra space there. And uh, he was all right with letting us put it there, which was good because we really needed it. That was all the stuff that we had in our apartment. And now we're down to basically living out of a suitcase. You know, we've got, we took a little kind of a, a basket kind of thing. I don't know how to describe it, but they were, they were, they're what we use as laundry baskets. Got them from Ikea and they fold down uh, flat. They're like net things, but they're, they're fairly large. And each person, each one of the kids, me and my wife, we all have all, um, all our clothes in one of these laundry baskets. And uh, yeah, so we're living like that. It's like we're on a vacation or a trip of some sort, but we're not. I mean, we're still in town. We go to my dad's house with this stuff. And then we go to my sister's house with this stuff and you know all we've got is what we've got and uh, we don't have laundry we don't have a washing machine or a dryer that we can use uh, my sister did have one and I think we did do some laundry while we were there although we may have only done it when we came back from vacation I can't remember um, so yeah we were at my sister's house for two days which was awesome because it was plenty big and it was plenty nice and it was uh, it was great for us um, except that it was also not baby safe you know what I mean my sister ha does not have young kids anymore and so she doesn't worry about what she leaves at you know short person level because the short people in her house will not destroy everything. But my short person does. He would go from one thing to the next to the next, just destroying. Search and destroy was what this kid did. And it was tough, it was hard. You couldn't relax for one second at her house because he would, if you did, he would break something, he would rip something, he would pull something down, he would grab the dirt out of the pot and throw it all over the floor uh, just all that kind of stuff he was really happy if you let him out into the backyard there was a whole bunch of toys that he could play with and stuff like that out there and you let him out in the backyard but it was hot it's, you know we're in the middle of August which is the hottest month uh, of every year here and uh, so you can only stand being outside for a short while um, before you had to bring him in again. So it was just, uh, it was a pain. Um, you know, I don't want to sound like a douche that's not grateful for having a place to stay, but it was hard to stay there um, the whole time. Uh, but we managed, obviously. <laughs> we kept a good eye on him and, and did what we could until uh, it came time for us to go on our vacation our vacation we had planned and we actually almost you know called it off if we were able to move into our house or something like that and and then uh, we thought we'd come home early uh, we ha I had two weeks off for this vacation and you know I think my wife originally wanted to stay all two weeks in Canada luckily I was able to talk her off that ledge because yeah, I don't enjoy being in Canada enough to be there for two weeks uh, at my in-laws house it's it's a little more than uh, I want to deal with um, but yeah uh, we were going to go for two weeks we decided we'd come back early and use the second half of our vacation to try and move in hopefully because while we were out in Canada, we should hear from the mortgage folks and they should tell us that USDA has looked at our stuff and they've cleared it and we're ready to move in. That's, uh, that was going to be our plan. And so Saturday came along and we all hopped in the car and we drove hours. We drove basically a whole day. It's like, it's a, it's a long trip. 
to get to Canada from, from where we're at. And uh, yeah, we got there, we uh, arrived at the in-laws house and we were there. We stayed there for a whole week. We went from Saturday all the way through the next Saturday and on to, I think Monday was our last full day there. And Tuesday was when we drove home. And yeah, being at the in-laws house was kind of a similar situation to being at my sister's house. It was not, I mean, she did her best to, uh, my mother-in-law did her best to try and make it, you know, kid-friendly. There was lots of toys that she would put out. Um, but toys only interest kids for a certain amount of time usually and then they're ready to move on to something else. Um, my son was desperate to be outside. They had no fence uh, of any sort or anything like that. So if he went outside, somebody had to be out there with him at all times, keeping a close eye on him so he didn't run off into the street and get run over or something like that. Um, yeah, he, uh, he wasn't happy just playing uh, and, you know, my mother-in-law's house is a new house. They moved from where my wife grew up to a totally new house. Uh, it was newly built for them, so it's all shiny and new. And they want to keep it that way. They want it to look nice. And so every time, uh, you know, the kids would be touching anything that would possibly cause a problem, you know, oh, don't do that, don't do that, oh, no, 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 no. And uh, yeah, you had to, again, just like at my sister's house, you had to keep a, a really close eye on the kids. You couldn't relax for a second. And it really wears on someone after a while, you know what I mean? When your only time to relax is when the child is asleep. Um, it can be really wearing and really difficult and hard to live with. Um, but we managed, we did our best, we, we dealt with it. <sighs> and we, so we were at now my, our, our third place. We were at my, uh, my in-laws house for a week and a half. We called, found out from the mortgage broker that there is no news, that our loan is not, uh, as far as we know, it's not on its way to being ready still in line or whatever the heck it was doing there for all this time it's still sitting and they're like yeah according to their website it takes 19 or no what did they say 15 to 21 business days and we're just like oh my gosh and, and you know at, at the point that we were at we we're like okay well we're at 14 business days now so it could be any time right um, so we we're kind of hoping that maybe we'd still get a call. Um, we drove back to uh, my sister's house from Canada, another day long trip. And we got there and we stayed at her house. She was still uh, gone. And we were there for several more days. Never heard anything about this loan, didn't know anything. We just sitting and waiting and hoping and praying and wishing and, how does that song go? Wishing and hoping and praying some 60s song it goes like that I can't remember what it is but anyways that was us we were doing that 60s song thing and uh, yeah we we're just we didn't know what to do my sister was gonna be home either Friday she was supposed to be home that Friday so we needed to figure something out uh, and uh, the funny thing was we got back from Canada and this friend of ours gives us a call and they say, hey, we're moving to California on, at 10 o'clock. So you better get over here so we can say goodbye. And we're just like, holy crap, what? Um, they had mentioned that they were thinking about moving before we left, but in, in like a week, his wife had gotten a job in Sacramento and they were out, they were on their way. They're just like you know, ready to go. So we went over to their house and they had their whole, their, you know, their moving truck was packed up and, and they were just like, yeah, we just gotta do these. And they wanted, you know, we, we helped them out doing a 
a few last minute things and then uh, we went out to lunch with them and then they hit the road uh, to California which was kind of surprising and, and uh, abrupt faster than we expected it could possibly happen but yeah so um, we decided uh, when we told them what was going on we were expecting that we would have to move out of my sister's house and just get a hotel for the next little while um, which we weren't excited about because that was going to cost you know 50 bucks a night or more It'd be expensive um, we were hoping to save money you know by moving into the house and you know you get the month where you don't have to pay a mortgage payment and you have etc but yeah it looked like we were going to blow all that money instead on a hotel and they're like oh no we're we're our house isn't sold so you guys can just stay at our house um while you're waiting and so we were excited to hear about that um, my friend was going to California with his family and then he was gonna fly back a couple days later and he was gonna do you know do some stuff finish working on his house getting it all up to snuff get it put up for sale and then he was gonna go back again and be back with his family um, so we <laughs> we got like a bunch of camping gear from my sister's house some sleeping bags some air mattresses and stuff like that and uh, we set them up in my friend's house and we camped in his empty house um that was interesting uh then my friend got there uh i think it was monday night so we had like a couple of days or it was just us and my friend got there on monday night and yeah uh that was an interesting deal too because because uh yeah my friend was trying to get his house fixed up and we're in there you know in it so you know we're we're only making it dirty i'm sure we are uh you know we've got our our air mattress and stuff on the floor so if somebody comes to look at his house because he's just putting it up for sale they're gonna be like what is this crap uh is there some homeless people camping out in your house the answer is yes um and yeah they would put in like a new bathroom that we we were using and we were encountering problems that uh had not been discovered yet in this new bathroom that they just put in before they moved out um so you know i'm there with a friggin plunger trying to unclog the the bathroom um which was super unpleasant because yeah it's just completely clogged yeah, that happened to me one day i had gone out running in the morning and uh <laughs> it happens to me sometimes where i'm desperate to go to the bathroom by the time i get home uh, so I ran straight into the bathroom, went to the bathroom, and then discovered that the toilet had been plugged already before I went to the bathroom. And so I had to get a plunger, and I had to spend the next half hour it took, which, you know, I don't know how often you have plugged a toilet, but it usually takes a minute or two to unplug, not a half hour. So I'm standing there for a half hour plunging this friggin' toilet trying to get it unplugged and meanwhile I'm sweating like a dog because I just I mean I walked in the door went straight to the bathroom I've been running five miles and I'm just sweating like a dog just pouring down and uh, that's that's the way it happens for me when I go running you know I sweat a little while I'm out there but when I come inside and I stop running or something that, that's when it really I really start to sweat um, I guess it's warmer inside a house, although that doesn't make sense if I'm out running in the sun and stuff. Maybe it's because there's no sun. I've heard that direct sunlight makes you not sweat. And that's why, like, Arabs wear those full-on robes and stuff uh, so that they can still sweat and still cool off. Because if they weren't doing that, then they wouldn't sweat and they wouldn't cool off. So maybe it's the lack of direct sunlight. I don't know what the deal is. I just know that, uh, yeah, that's the way I do it. So I'm sweating like crazy. My running clothes are now sodden with sweat as I freaking work on this thing. And finally, 
finally I get it to flush. And then, uh, yeah, it, but it kept doing it. It kept having problems. Uh, and there was other weird stuff, you know, like we gave the, kid, the baby a bath and then we're draining the bathtub and it starts like bubbling up out of the toilet. The bathtub is draining, it's going bloop, bloop, bloop into the toilet. It wasn't like running out of the toilet at least because that could have been really bad if it was draining into the toilet and then just flowing over. But yeah, it did this weird bubbling, I don't know, all sorts of weird stuff. And this is my friend's house he's trying to sell. And we're in here going, oh, there's this and there's that. And we start telling him about these things. And I think we're just stressing this dude out. He's already, you know, freaking out trying to get his house sold. He's only got a couple of weeks to, to deal with it. And here we are making it worse. And, um, you know, we did our best. We tried to not make it dirty at all we would eat our freaking breakfast and that was another thing we had no fridge his fridge went with his family to Sacramento he bought a little mini fridge and it was a mini mini fridge I mean it had no space in that dang thing it was so small and so we were able to keep a tiny bit so basically we were eating um we were eating uh, fast food and stuff every day. And we've actually been doing this for a while because aside from my sister's house, there's not a, a place that we were at that we could cook at. Uh, you know, my, my stepmom obviously, I mean, not my stepmom, sorry, my, uh, my mother-in-law, she cooked for us while we were there um, on vacation. But, uh, but yeah, all the other places that we were at, we're just like, ah, oh, we gotta, just go out for fast food and I'm eating fast food freaking three meals a day it sucked imagine what that does to your freaking body it turns it into pure fat um but anyways uh yeah so we're doing this we have like muffins that we've got from Costco that we've stuck in there we're having those for breakfast and uh we, we're eating them out on the front porch so that we don't get crumbs in his kitchen and on his floor anywhere and he comes and looks, he's like, oh, there's crumbs all over the the welcome mat. And so we're like, oh, shoot. And so so now we're eating out on the sidewalk to try and not get crumbs on even the welcome mat. Um, and so, yeah, we're realizing that we're just causing problems for this guy and uh, eating on the the sidewalk is kind of so we're thinking maybe we'll just go to a hotel or something after all and then a friend of my wife's from work is like oh no you guys come stay with us we've got this basement that's open you've got a bed you could sleep on you won't have to sleep on an air mattress we've got you know a, a family room that has a Wii and it has dish network that TV on the TV you can watch and she's she's totally talking it up trying to get us to go there my wife's like I don't know. I mean, we it's like we're ruining all our friendships everywhere we go. Do we need to ruin one more? Um, but in the end, we decided we'd go and stay with this person. So this is what, like the fifth, the sixth? I don't know. Let's see, we went from my dad's to my sister's to my mother-in-law's. Um, back to my sister's. Then to my friend who moved to California. And then lastly, to this friend of my wife from work. So, yeah, and that one was kind of interesting. I don't know if they were just trying to make it feel like home for us or something like that, but we never, ever saw the folks that lived at that house. I mean, we didn't go upstairs, because, um, you know, that's up in their living quarters. We, you know, we didn't do that. Uh, we would go to the main floor. We were in the basement. We would go to the main floor and, and uh, you know, have our breakfast or whatever. Uh, there, but we would never see them at that time. They were just gone. It, w it was like we owned the house, you know. We were just somehow they were upstairs, we were downstairs, and we never the twain met. Um, it's kind of uh, unusual. But finally, 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 they called and told us that our loan had cleared the USDA which I guess is, you know, I, I suppose it was really, really backed up because the, uh, 
you know, the economy is finally starting to improve. Real estate is finally starting to sell for, you know, a decent price again. So everybody was, you know, all these people who've been waiting for all these years to be able to do that are jumping on it, including us. Uh, and so, yeah, we, uh, we got to wait through it, but finally they said it's ready. And they told us, you know, this was a Monday, they called us and told us that it had cleared. Um, they said that they would uh, be able to close on the loan within 24 hours after that. Um, but they're like, yeah, we still need the appraiser guy to go by, take the final pictures of the house. Um, so uh, I, I need to get a hold of that guy and find out when he can go. We're trying to look for four o'clock the next day and I'm trying to figure out how I can get the day off uh, so that I can be there. And uh, this guy is not giving me enough info to even know is if it's actually going to happen at that time I'm like yeah so four o'clock tomorrow then he's like well maybe for sure I mean we're not sure yet so I'll let you know and then of course he doesn't let me know the whole day goes by and he doesn't call just as he's been doing all along because this guy's a putz and a freaking tard can't stand the guy completely worthless and uh yeah so it comes and finally at the end of the day i call him and i'm like hey is it gonna be four tomorrow or what because i need to get the day off he's like oh, oh well uh, no let's just let's just plan on wednesday for sure then don't take the day off tomorrow just in case and i'm just like ah, but i want to move into my house um so Instead, we put it off till Wednesday, but I talked to a real estate guy and he said once the appraiser guy takes the pictures, then we can just move into our house. So we actually moved in and spent our first night in our house on that Tuesday night. Now this has been like three weeks. I think the, the day that we closed our house was the 28th of August. So that's actually four weeks, I guess, since the day that we moved out from the 1st of August to the 28th. So that was pretty crazy. Okay, everybody, you'll have to forgive me. Um, I had to stop there and then I had to work eight hours at work and then I got back in the car and I'm trying to remember where I was in the uh, narrative of shite. Um, that I've been going through. But I think what I finished with was that we uh, got our house. Um, and we moved in. Actually, the day before we signed. But, uh, yeah, we moved in. We got our house. And, and uh, yeah, now we've moved all our crap in there. And we're steadily unpacking it and finding places for it. And uh, I haven't been able to record with Rish for, like, two weeks because of this stuff. Um... So, yeah, we'll see uh, how that goes. Uh, if we ever get back together again and do another uh, episode. Oh, we need to get going. We've got an episode that's ready to go. But, um, yeah, we <laughs> haven't put it together. We haven't recorded the outro for it yet. I think we've got a story called... Ooh, I almost <laughs> turned in front of me. That would have been really ugly on the podcast I crash into someone in a very high rate of speed uh, but yeah we've uh, we've got a story that's ready to go called um, something crap what is the name of that story called eh, I can't remember what it's called but it's coming soon and uh, it's gonna be awesome so good so uh, yeah that's what's coming down the line I'm, I'm kind of back in place I've got my computer plugged in I've got uh, Wi-Fi internet connection once again. I've got, uh, you know, the whole shebang going. Uh, the, the new home of the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine, my new little study, uh, is being put together. My wife was just telling me that she got the bookshelves um, and she's bringing them home. She's, I think she's probably already got them home. So I can put them up behind my desk where my computer is and be all set with this awesomeness going on. 
and uh, yeah, that's going to be cool. I'm excited. And uh, so hopefully here pretty soon. I even pulled out the mics. I pulled out the mics and I set them up and I left them on the desk. I didn't put them away. I left them set up. So that'll be cool. Hopefully, um, yeah, we'll be able to leave them out. I think it'll work. So, so yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun times. Now I just need to write a story that we can do for the show. I've got a few that I've written before that we can do, but you know, I need to write a new story. Anyways, uh, yeah, there is my show. Uh, it's the end of another ankle cast, the end of an era, the beginning of a new one where I'm in a new house and I'm not homeless. End of the homeless era, beginning of the new era. Um, and hopefully it will be a productive and awesome era. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for listening, folks. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, you can leave them in the comments and I can answer them. Uh, yeah. That's the ankle cast. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later.